Hello, welcome back to Portworks Lightboard Sessions. My name is Ryan Walner, technical advocate here at Portworks. Today we're going to talk about Portworks on Kubernetes. So if you're not familiar with Kubernetes, definitely go check out the Kubernetes documentation. Uh, get your hands on it, deploy it, get a sense for kind of what it is. And then uh, we're going to talk about a little bit of how you run stateful applications on Kubernetes and how Portworks runs on Kubernetes. So Portworks first gets deployed onto Kubernetes. So Kubernetes itself has a set of masters. These are going to be our masters here. And a set of infrastructure nodes. These are called workers in the Kubernetes nomenclature. And these workers are going to be the things that run your applications, uh, and they're, they're typically designated uh, and deployed applications by the master. So if you make an API request, right, your API is going to be here at your masters, and this API request comes in to deploy a database, it will then read uh, the types of resources available on these worker nodes. We'll call these, we'll label these workers, I should say. And uh, it will pick a node that's best suited to deploy that. Now, Portworks itself runs this way. So we can go ahead and go to install.portworks.com. I'll put the link below. And basically get a specification file, which is a big YAML file, that we can deploy to our uh, Kubernetes clusters via kubectl. Once that happens, Portworks runs as a daemon set in here. Right? So Portworks gets deployed as a pod on each one of your uh, worker nodes. And what happens is, depending on where you're running, if you're in the cloud or if you're on-prem, it'll provision or it'll consume disks available to the uh, worker nodes themselves. And it'll go ahead and benchmark and consume these and create a globally available storage pool. Now, Portworks itself will run, at, like I said, uh, via Kubernetes as a daemon set or an operator if you're on something like OpenShift. It'll create this pool of storage. Uh, it'll connect to a key value database like uh, at CD. And that is kind of how Portworks initially gets started on your cluster. Now, as you deploy applications in your pods, applications can use something called a EVC, uh, persistent volume claim, which creates a PV through something called dynamic provisioning. And that PV is actually what connects a volume provision from this pool to an application. Right? So PV is a representation of a disk available provision from Portworks, and then it gets mounted into the container and the application writes to it. Now, in your PVC, you can specify parameters, um, storage class is going to be needed, and that will point to a Portwork storage class. And then there's parameters such as replication and IO, um, priority, and this is all going to happen in the, the persistent value plane. The PV is actually something you don't have to create. Dynamic provisioning will go ahead and um, create that for you and track the actual volume itself. So once an application in a pod gets mounted to a volume, uh, you can go ahead and just kind of run. You know, this can be things like MySQL or Cassandra, uh, Elasticsearch, Jenkins, for instance. Now, Portworx offers two kinds of uh, volumes. Uh, one is read, write only, and read, write, many. 
So read write only is um, or sorry, read write once is basically your block, and this is typically referenced by a single volume. And then read write many is when multiple pods can access the same volume. And we'll get into shared volumes a little more in another video. Uh, again, Coreworks allows applications to dynamically get uh, deployed here. And when you're in when you're in Kubernetes, we also deploy something called Stork, which uh, basically understands the scheduling decisions from the masters and allows applications to be placed close to where their data is. Right? If there's one replica, we want this application to use that one replica. Whereas if we have another application that has a volume with two replicas, right? This replica would be over here, and then another one could be over here. Uh, this whole node could go down, and this application can just spin up automatically, and Stork can make sure it lands there next to its replica. So I'm going to stop here. You know, we're going to dig into um, the types of modes for volumes. We can dig into what Stork actually is. We can dig into the parameters in other videos. So this has been what works on Kubernetes and how it gets deployed. Again, I'll link to documentation like install.whatworks.com and other dynamic versioning documentation. Thanks for watching.